Uh, you know, we love stories in our church. So one of the things I love to do is like when I, I uh, drive Uber once in a while, and instead of talking like I like to do, I actually listen, believe it or not, and I get asked a person, tell me your story. And they love that because they can tell me they're from wherever they're from, they're going to school to do this, or they're here for a business trip, and I just love hearing people's stories. Today we're going to hear a wonderful story of what God has done in Dion and Ashley's lives and how he has, God has blessed them Amen. tremendously. I, I can't even sleep at night when I think about what God is doing in our church family. Amen. There's so many great stories that are going on here. Um, uh, I think the, the shift in my thinking has been that we are truly a family of God. Amen. Amen. We're here to serve one another and serve God. Amen. And that we have a mission. And that mission is to share the gospel of Jesus Christ with the world around us, amen? And so it puts, puts our family together as like we have a purpose now instead of showing up at church on Sunday. And I just, I just love that. So today I'm going to share for just a few minutes uh, from the Word of God about children. And then uh, Ashley is going to come and share her story and tell you what God's been doing in her life and life of her husband and these two wonderful new babies and Gracie, of course. And then uh, Dion's going to come, and then I'm going to invite uh, Grandma and Grandpas to come up with uh, Dion and Ashley, and we're going to dedicate these two wonderful boys to Jesus. And uh, together, we're going to have communion at the end, and we're going to dedicate our lives to serving God together. Amen? And, and not only that, we're going to help Dion and Ashley raise these two boys for the kingdom of God, but also uh, we ourselves are going to... I just got a text message. Can you make a text message? Oh. Sorry, can I give this to you? So uh, it's distracting sometimes. Let me turn it off. There you go. <laughs> I was gonna, I, I brought it up so I could take pictures, but or somebody could take pictures for me at the, at the end. Amen. So praise the Lord. If uh, let's just uh, take a minute and let's just pray, ask God's blessing on the remainder of our service. Father, we love you, and we are so grateful for this day that we can celebrate life. Father, we celebrate the blessings that you bestowed upon our church family and upon your kingdom. Father, I ask that you just use these words to encourage us to continue to, to serve you with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. I got a couple different stories. I'm going to talk about the children in the Bible. There's about three or four verses I'm going to go through. In 1 Samuel uh, 1, 26-27, uh, talks about um, Hannah who wanted a child so bad that she asked God for a boy. And God blessed her with this child. And God gave her this wonderful child. And in that promise, she promised God, if you give me a child, I will give that child back to you for a service. And that's kind of where we get dedication from, is that we're given what God's given us, bless us with, and we give that child back to God. And let God use that child any way he sees fits. Better than our plans, amen? Does God have better plans than we do? He does, amen? And I, just, I like that. Uh, we dedicate all our children for, to God. Um, and whatever God wants to do with them, it's hard for us as parents to keep our hands off of what God's doing. Amen? But what our responsibility is to raise them up to love God, right? In Psalms 127, verse 3 says, Children are a gift from the Lord. Offspring are a reward to Him. And I also talk about being a quiverful. I think we've had our quiverful team, and I have five children and five grandchildren, so we're excited about that. But then I count all the children that are in the church, so we count them all as our children, our grandchildren, and because we're part of a family, and so we were, we're just blessed by that. So you're, we're blessed. I believe every child is given to us by God, amen, for us to care for. So how am I going to do this? I, uh, actually, how am I going to raise two boys, two twins at the same time? I have no clue, but God does, amen? And God will give you the strength to do that. And, when yeah. you know, I, I always thought, thought about when the kids are sick, and Tina and I are like, oh, this, this child's feverish. You call the doctor or the nurse or the hospital, and they say, well, that's normal, 105 fever. They're going to be okay. I'm like, no, it's not. Everything I read on the Internet says this is bad. <laughs> Wait, the doctor's like, well, they don't want to bother. So we just, what do you do? You, you stop going in the natural and seeking that, and you go, God, you gave me this child. Would you touch this child? And, you know, there's many times over the life of our children that God has just taken the fever yes. away put the child in the bed, and we can get a good night's sleep. Amen. So I think, thank the Lord. The Lord loves sleep, too, you know. He knows that you need it. So um, I remember early in our Christian walk, we were, uh, 
Tina and I were new Christians. We were living in Sneesbury, North Carolina. You probably, some of you know, uh, heard this part of our story. But uh, we used to, every Friday night was our party night, right? So we would invite all my Marine buddies over to the house. We'd drink and do other things. And then, you know, we'd party until early in the morning. And I'd wind up driving back to the base in the morning. Well, when I became a believer, I thought that would be my night to share Jesus with all my buddies, right? So instead of that next week, right, instead of having beer and other things, we, we, uh, well, come on, you know, uh, I wasn't saved, right? We did other things. Um, uh, what's so beautiful, this, um, this couple that we were in our Bible study, or came, and I would share the Bible with them. I didn't know anything about the Word of God except for John chapter 3, verse 16. God loved us, and He gave His Son for us, and if we believe that, we have eternal life. So I shared that, and then we talk about it, and then sometimes we talk to them late at night, right? I didn't, I didn't know what I was talking about. God knew, and anyway, these people became Christians and believers. One couple had a child that was very, very sick. Do you remember that night? So sick, they didn't know what to do. They came to our house, and uh, I asked. They were the mom's worried, the dad's worried. Young, young couple. They were probably in early twenties. Uh, just fearful, fear all over them, and Tina's trying to comfort them, and, and uh, I just felt the Holy Spirit tell me, take the baby, and I said, can I have the baby, and he said, yeah, so I grabbed the baby, and just seriously, I just walked into our, into our, through our kitchen, we live in a really small house, probably fit on this side of the sanctuary, and I walked through our back door outside, and I said, Father, this is your child, heal this child, I didn't do it in front of them, I don't know why, but this is what I did, right? So by the time I walked back through the kitchen into the living room, which was only a few steps, the child was, the fever was totally gone, the baby was giggling, and I said, here, take your baby, and they went and they left. So I guess I was tired, you know, I just wanted to get to sleep. But anyway, God healed that little baby. So I know sometimes when we're just, you know, don't know what to do, God does things because we, these are gifts from God. God's given us these children to raise for Him, and so He's, he loves them just as much as you do and cares about them when they're not feeling well. I remember when Amy, when we were in the hospital just recently with uh, our granddaughter, um, Esther, and she had a, a stroke and um, a seizure, and it affected the right back lobe of her brain, or back side of her brain. And in the MRI or in the CT scan, you could see this place where this happened, but then within the next, within less than 24 hours, when they did the next one, all the blood flow, everything was perfectly normal, and they just kept running tests day after day to figure out what happened, and we're just like finally said, okay, we're done with the test. We just, it happened, God healed her, she's done, let us go home, and in the next couple of days, or the day after that, we were home, because there's, what other tests you do? The, the uh, neurologist goes, well, this is perfectly normal. We can see where there's some scar tissue, but there's nothing wrong with her, or at least everything's working properly. So we just give God praise for that. God cares yes. about everything we can go to, because they're, they're His children. They're, they're a gift from God to us. And if you say amen, and I praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Another one, uh, 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 Proverbs 26, uh, 22, 6 says, direct your children into the right path, and when they are older, they will not leave it or depart from it. It says in the King James Bible, right? It's what I used to know. So raise your children, what? In the way of God. Teach and pray over them. Teach them about scripture verses when they're young, as they grow up. And when they're teenagers and they're fighting over all that stuff, you still teach them and you pray over them and you love them anyway because God wants to use them for his kingdom, amen? Because all of us grow up, all of us want to do our own thing and we have to come to the realization during that age, whatever that age is, right? 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, whatever it is, they're going to have to make a decision to follow Jesus on their own. Amen? And we can't make them do that. I've learned this, this the hard way. Right? You can't make your children serve God, but you can show them and love them and encourage them to, to, to honor God with their lives. Right? And eventually they'll come to know the truth because you prayed over them all those years. You loved on them and they'll come to see Jesus I, because I believe it, the word is true what it says right here when you teach your children the ways of God they're going to grow up and they're going to follow God amen they're not going to follow any other God they're going to follow Jesus amen they're going to follow the Lord they're going to find the way of salvation through Jesus Christ so we know that through the word so you can when, you, when your kids are kind of like in that mode where they're doing their own thing and you have like it seems hopeless we can go to the word of God where God says this and we can just trust in the Lord amen and then we have baby dedication, uh, I believe also because of what um, Matthew, well, let me share one more thing. In Matthew 19, 14, it says this, but Jesus said, let the children come unto me, okay, 
Do not stop them, it says in the, in the New Living Bible. It says, for the kingdom of heaven belongs to those who are like children. And doesn't God tell us that we should be like children? Our faith is, is, it talks about our faith, our faith. We trust God because a child, think about a child, especially when they're around three, two, three, or four years old. You got, mom and dad walk on water. You can do anything. They love you. They trust you with everything because you provide everything for them. And the Lord says we should be just like that because God will provide everything that we need. Even take care of our house when it's destroyed in, in uh, Springfield, Missouri. Amen. We have to trust the Lord in everything. This faith, we have to believe that God is. Huh? And yes, He does reward those that seek Him, that diligently seek Him. And man, well, I don't, I don't really believe all that. Well, you know, God today wants to change your heart. That's why we're going to take this whole service today. Here and show you that we dedicate our lives up to Him. We serve Him with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind. And the other one is like that. He said, love our neighbors as ourselves. It just adds to that, right? So when we say, yes, God, I'm going to serve you. Yes, God, I'm going to follow you. Yes, God, I'm going to do whatever you say. Yes, God, help me to believe when I, um, I don't believe. Amen? Yes, God, you are the only, the only way through salvation is through Jesus. Yes, Lord, I'm going to be like a little child. Pray that prayer this week. Amen? Pray that prayer and say, God, I want to be just like you. I want to have, I want to be just like a child. I want to believe in you. So, just a couple quick things, and then Ashley's going to come and share. Um, and I'm just going to go through uh, the first, uh, why we have dedication. Okay? So, first family, I said, uh, beginning, Hannah um, dedicated her son to the Lord's work. And we see that later on, there's a great ministry that happened through 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 Samuel. So that's an um, uh, amazing story. Also, we look at Luke chapter 2. Let's turn there, Luke chapter 2. And this is where Jesus was dedicated. For this I pray, the Lord has given me my petition, which I've asked of him. So I have also dedicated him to the Lord. So as long as he lives, um, he is dedicated to the Lord. This was in um, Mary and Joseph dedicated Jesus. So he was doing that in fulfillment of the law. So they had a, a sacrifice an animal. They had, a, a, they had to they were bring him to the temple after the eighth day. And then he was dedicated to the Lord because the Lord is, uh, well, in the law, it was the firstborn son who was supposed to be dedicated to the Lord. Amen. So Jesus also dedicated his priest uh, to, to the children, of, uh, to the house of the Lord. And so it was an amazing thing to happen. Also, this is, a, this is another scripture verse that I really enjoy. Deuteronomy 6, 5 through 9 says this. This is God giving instruction about children. It says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. These commandments I, that I give you today are to be upon your heart. Impress them where? On your children. How do you impress them? You demand them to serve God? No. You, you show them by your actions, by your love, by what you do. You share the scriptures with them. You pray over them. You read over them. Talk about them when you sit down at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your forehead. Write them on the doorposts of your house and in your gates. I want to teach a lot right now because this is really important. So we have these Old Testament. God was showing the children of Israel how they should raise their children so they serve the Lord. Amen. And, and, and direct them through everyday life. Through your, you're actually discipling your children, right? When they're young, you show them what to do. When they get a little bit older, you let them. How many of you let your children watch your children pray for the first time over dinner, right? They they all, they say exactly what you say, right? They already bow their heads, they hold their hands, or whatever you do, uh, they do that. So you show them, and and as they grow up, they'll right, they um, will follow your example to uh, serve the Lord. But I think that there's a, an important part of this that. In the New Testament, we have some help, and I shared that last week, that we that these guys didn't have. We have the Holy Spirit in us now, and the Holy Spirit helps you direct things, right. and share, and follow, and lead, help to lead you. So it's, it's, we have an important uh, uh, 
Uh, God knew we need help, not only to be his witnesses, but also to, to help with our children. Amen? So just take that, read those if you want this week. But I would like Ashley to come. But we told, we said uh, today's service would be a little bit different. And so I had to share with Ashley and Dion. I wanted to share part of the story. And so Ashley's going to come first, and Dion. And um, would you give Ashley a hand? I mean, she had to <laughs> We got married after knowing each other two months. You were not even remotely best friends. 
I want him to be my social support. I want him to be the man of the household. I want him to be all the stuff that I needed God to be. And I couldn't put that burden on him. He did the same thing to me. Um, so going through counseling, especially Christian counseling, it helped us uh, learn and uncover things that we have to look to God for and not just um, to man, whether it's our pastor, putting him on the pedestal, you know, you're amazing. Um, you know, putting a husband on the pedestal, we have to look at God. So fast forward some more. Uh, last year, we were like, okay, we could either buy a house or have a baby. We're like, well, Grace is about to be three. We should probably just, like, you know, keep it close together. Um, we decided to get pregnant. Uh, got pregnant pretty quickly. We are pretty fertile, apparently. Um, <laughs> I'm not joking. Um, got, pregnant, got pregnant. And at my four-month appointment, before then, everyone kept saying, you're so big. And I'm like, well, this is like my third pregnancy. I guess, you know, your body just kind of goes in the autopilot. Like, like, you're so big, you're having twins. And, my friend Diamond kept saying, I'm praying for twins. I'm like, shut up. You know, we don't have a design altar. We can't do that. Um, and my four-month appointment, we went in there, and he's like, I told my mom, he's like, you're kind of big. You, you're you having twins. So I told the doctor, he's like, oh, no, you're fine. You're not having twins. Let's just check you anyway. So he measured me. He's like, you're measuring kind of big, but no, you're fine. Then he went to the heartbeat thing. He's like, you know, when is your ultrasound? And I'm like, us oh, in a couple weeks. He's like, we're going to reschedule that for today. Probably now. I'm like, why? It's like, because I can't tell how many are in there. Like, <laughs> this I ran out the door, and not what you say to someone when they're laying on their back and pregnant, like, I don't know how many are in there. Dion wasn't with me, so uh, I called him. We had the ultrasound two hours later, and little Yin and Yang basically were in my tummy. Uh, I couldn't believe it was my stomach on the screen. I thought they just, I work at Epic, so that's the software they have. I thought maybe it was a glitch. I need to, like, you know, go to work and say, like, I need to refresh the screen. Like, that's not But no, um, it, was, it was my tummy with two boys in it. Um, so fast forward some more. Uh, the pregnancy was actually pretty good for twins. Most people complain about being on bed rest, all that. I mean, I just got really big and ate a lot, just like any regular pregnancy. Um, but towards the end, it just got um, really hard because I got really big and then I started, I got like a, this like pregnancy related rash that you only get like one million times and got tired and uh, I kept having like false labor at 30 weeks. I, they almost came actually. I went into labor. I was starting the lawnmower, which you should not do when you're pregnant apparently. And uh, <laughs> well, I told Dion to like, to like uh, let the gas out before the, the winter came. And he said he did, but he didn't. So we flooded the carburetor, and um, I was trying to fix it and uh, went to labor. So at 30 weeks, I went to labor. Um, they gave me steroid shots and magnesium to stop them because they were super tiny then. Um, they stopped the labor. I was in the hospital for about a week. They stopped the labor. Um, unfortunately, they stopped it so well that I didn't go into labor, period. They had to induce me at 38 weeks. So, uh, but we had them. Birth story really quick. Um, I, got in, I came into the hospital at five centimeters because my body just didn't want them to come out, I guess. Um, and they're like, oh, this should be quick. You're like halfway there already. So they hooked me up, broke my water, waiting around, so nine o'clock in the morning. And then around two, they're like, oh, nothing's happening. You're still five centimeters. I'm like, okay. They give me Pitocin, and um, stuff starts picking up. Contractions start kind of sucking a lot. Like, I was breathing through them before, but then it was like, these actually kind of suck a lot. So finally, I'm like, all right, I'm done. I'm ready. Check me. I want the pain meds. I don't care. The whole, like, I'm going to do pain-free pregnancies out the window. Who cares? Don't care. Um, whatever. They check me. They're like, you're eight centimeters. So it's kind of too late for that. It's like, then I started crying. Passing it above my head. If you do this, it'll be okay. I'm like, no, I can't. I just don't want to see anymore. Um, they're like, eight centimeters. Like, this is not me. She just started crying. She just started crying a long time ago. Um, eventually, uh, we had a couple of contractions. I'm like, I have to pee. So the nurse dragged me in the bathroom with all my stuff, and she's like, all right, I'm like, have a contraction while I'm in the bathroom. I'm like, I think I have gas. And she's like, what? I'm like, I think I have to poop. She's like, no, no, no. Before she could even like get to the no, no, no part, I was like, oh God, somebody please help me. And the baby was coming out. There was no pushing, there was no nothing. I'm on the toilet in the bathroom in my room. So the nurse pulled a little ripcord in the room all the like football team where the nurses and doctors come running in. She like pushes me backwards on the toilet and like catches them before it hits the water. So that was Zeke. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't hit the water, so he's not born in the toilet, just in the bathroom. <laughs> uh, 
um, at that point, Zach was half, was like kind of sideways, and they were trying to, they were going to try to turn him, but since I had him in the bathroom, like the plan we had of turning him was kind of off, because no one was there. Um, so he turned around and was a uh, breach, he was butt first, head up, feet up by his head. Um, so they rushed me to the OR and everything, and they're like, well, most people that have breach, they have a C-section because it's kind of hard to get people out of the first, apparently. The head only gets stuck. Um, my doctor's like, well, Zeke was bigger, and it's actually a little bit smaller, and I feel comfortable trying it. I'm like, okay, because I don't really want a C-section. It sounds really scary. So, uh, 30 minutes later, I delivered Zach, breach, butt first, head didn't get stuck, um, perfect labor, I guess, all the little pain meds and everything. And people were like, oh, good job. Like, it was not my choice at all. Like, <laughs> it was, at eight centimeters, it was my choice to be, like, put to sleep. Um, but, you know, we did it. Um, as far as their names, I know I think you said the story a little bit in the letter. But just a quick thing, when I was in middle school, like every girl, you pick out baby names, right? When I get older, I'm going to have, you know, four boys. They're going to be blah, blah, blah. So I picked, I was like, if I ever have boys and they're twins, I'm going to be Hezekiah and Zachariah. Because those are just so cute names. So fast forward to find out we're having twins. Um, we told everyone in the church, and then Hepzibah actually texted me. She's like, what do the names mean? And I'm like, mm -hmm, we just, just picked them. So I looked at it, and Hezekiah means, you know, my strength. But the important thing that we thought really brought home what, what God did, taking us from not knowing each other to randomly getting married to losing a baby to um, going through counseling to having a daughter named Grace who, like, is love of our life to not have a voice. Zachariah means God remembered. And um, we just feel like God was, even when we felt like he wasn't around, he remembered where we started from. Um, we wanted, I wanted Deion to have something so bad. You know, it's like, nothing should happen to these babies. Like, please, God, we're going to have any pregnancy complications, not these babies. I want my, my husband to have sons. And it was just like, we found out the name was like, God remembered, you know, DJ, he remembered where we came from and that Amen. he's going to bring his babies Amen. into this yeah. world. That's so, right. Um, so that, that's my side of the story. I guess yeah, I can tell his side now. <laughs> Say anything about money, having money, and being prepared to be married, and say anything about you 
know, you actually had to date someone for a very long time or anything like that, but it just said that if you can't sustain yourself from sexual intercourse, then you should get married. And it was basically all we found. So we looked at it, we were just kind of like, okay, you know, it's no really no huge checklist or whatever, it just says it's one thing. So hey, let's get, well, we could just get married. So yeah, we waited until our two month anniversary. I don't know why, like she said, we got married on uh, June 23rd, 2011. And the same day, I think I took my final exam, and then we like got in the car and we took off the next morning. And I packed my mom's trailblazer to the roof. She packed her little Saturn at the time, and then we drove here. And we actually uh, found an apartment. Well, she found an apartment when she was here visiting, and she got the job at Ethic. So, so we found out um, we were pregnant, and I was like, oh, now we're pregnant. So, okay, how does this all work? So we went into the doctor's office, they was like, you'll be pregnant, and then I think later on they were able to find the sex of the baby. I was like, oh, it's a boy, so we still even had to the day the little ultrasound of, of DJ, and um, we found, found out that's who was having a boy, so Ashley was like, well, we want to name him. I was like, oh, it'd be nice to have a junior. So I was like, yeah, my name is DJ. And at the same time, we had found this church, and we were coming here, and we were going to do discipleship class and different things like that. Met Pastor Richard, um, Angel, Rajiv, and you know, so we started getting some people around us to help us out, and then unfortunately, uh, yeah, we lost the baby. I remember that morning very uh, vividly because I think what happened was we woke up and the baby he was moving and everything, everything was fine. And uh, I, I, I can't—I think you said like you had a little bit of pain, but it was like okay, but the baby was moving. So she went to work and I went to work, and um, you know, then she Ruthie actually called me. She's not here today. She called her friend at work. I could hear Ashley like crying, and I'm like, okay, what's going on? And she was like, well, she's in serious pain, and I'm gonna take it to the doctor's for meals there. So uh, I met them there, and we got to the doctor's, and at that moment, you know, your wife is in pain, and you're the husband, it's like, it's not much you can do. So I'm like, really nervous, you know, what's going on? And um, they're like, you know, trying to find heartbeat or whatever, so they're hooking up to the monitor, trying to find heartbeat, and you know, they're sitting there and they're listening, and the doctor, they're like, doing everything they can, and they just turn to us and it's like, you know, unfortunately, we can't um, find a heartbeat. So, you know, at that moment, it was just, uh, it was really hard, you know, to know that, you know, you had a child that was going to be born, but then uh, he passed away, and the uh, pastor came up, and Pastor Tina came up, and then my wife, you know, we prayed together that night, and she ended up having to still have the baby, um, because it was already past a certain term, so you can't give any medicine to this make up acid in the bath, but you actually have to give birth, so that was really difficult. And then you go to the suites and you get other babies crying and stuff like that, but you don't have a baby, so it's really difficult. And then me as a as a man, I always tell my wife, like it's something with a woman and a and a, and a daughter, and then it's something with a, a man or a husband or a, or a father and a son. Um, so and I was really distressed and I was just like, well, you know, it's different for me because the baby wasn't here and didn't pass away. For her it was different because once a woman is pregnant, they already become mom. You know, kind of dad, you're kind of like, well, I'm a dad, but then when the baby come out, I'm actually a dad. You know, that's what my perspective was. So, then as, as we said, through that moment, like, our relationship was fine, but then <clears throat> all of a sudden, you know, we'd be like, argue all the time, and get frustrated with each other all the time, and like, not just like the arguments of like, you know, hey, you didn't do this, it would be like deeper arguments with like, you, every, every, everything you talk about, you just argue about. So you, you couldn't even you couldn't even talk about if you're going to the grocery store like simple stuff because it would be it would, it would be really bad and I um, and at the time um, you know I was like man look at all the like I'm trying with this woman like this woman's crazy you know and uh, <laughs> you know I was like I was like I didn't sign up for this you know me and I had multiple conversations with Richard and Pastor and stuff and I was like man that was weird and Pastor will always tell me like I can't give you ABC steps of what to do but I know you guys can get through it and I'm just like. Pastor, man, give me an answer. <laughs> you know, I was like, Pastor, come on, man, give me an answer. And Pastor's always told me, you know, I, I, I don't have the answer for you, but I know you can trust God. And we believe in your wife, pray for you that you got to make through it. So I'm like, okay. So we, we, we go down this road, and then we talked about counseling, but we never went. And then finally, uh, I was talking to my mom about some of the stuff. She was like, yeah, you guys probably should go to counseling because. I think it was so bad to the point where people would come visit that they were like, man, we don't even want to come visit. And I think our friends that just came off in the baby cells, they came to visit and they were like, man, I'm never want to come back because you guys just argue all the time. 
So when they actually came back to visit, it was like, hey, you guys, what do you need different? You know, so we was able to explain some stuff. So we go to counseling, and when you get to counseling, it's, you know, it's weird because, you know, I was open to it, but then it was kind of like, you know, we go here, and then it's kind of like, um, the counselor is there to, you know, help everyone talk things out. But you have to believe in the process and you have to want to do it. Like, I can go to counseling all day long, but if I'm not willing to change or do anything, it doesn't do, it, it doesn't do anything. So I was going there, and um, the counselor would talk to us about, like, how we felt about certain things. And he said everything was in the way you talk to each other. So it's like, um, so that's also when you have to do this, you have to be like, are you willing to do that to allow the person to uh, make the decision? And the decision lies on the person. It's like, well, I prefer to do this. So, hey, we're going out today. I, I really prefer to do that. So if I go out today, I might be a little grumpy because I really wanted to do this today so that everyone knows I'm on the same page. So, and you get to realize that. So then the counselor did one-on-one uh, -on -one sessions with us. And I think the night before, um, you know, I did a lot of praying for like our relationship, praying for my wife and then me. But then I was reminded of Genesis and the fall of man when uh, Adam, once everything happened, went bad, he blamed his wife for everything, right? told God, like, hey, you gave me this woman, you did that. And I felt like I was kind of doing that a little bit too. I'm just like, hey, man, you know, my wife, she's not like Pastor Tino, she's not like Pastor she's not like some of the other women. But I, I didn't know everyone else's story and what everyone else went through to me. I just know I was going through it. I'm just like, man, this is horrible. You know, so the Lord reminded me, it's like, hey, you know, you don't, you don't, you don't, you don't want to point fingers because easily in marriage or dating or whatever, it's easily like cast blame, right? Because that's a curse that we indebted from, from Adam, right? Oh, it's your fault. Have anything to do it? I'm self-righteous. I didn't do anything right. I didn't do anything wrong, so I'm gonna go over here. So the Lord reminded me that, like, uh, when you break down the husband and wife, when you break down that down in uh, Hebrew, it just talks about that you guys are supposed to complement each other, right? So it's gonna be some things that actually brings to the table that I may not be so great at, but it's other things I can do that she might not be great at. One example is that, like, my wife, she's really good with coming up with great ideas and doing things, but she really doesn't follow through all the time. So on the other side of that. I usually see things all the way through, so I usually help her through things like, hey, you're doing a great job, keep on doing it, oh, did you remember to do this, or can you finish that, and then she finishes it, and then we can celebrate together, so we compliment each other that way, but when we didn't know that, I didn't know that at first, and then the second thing for me was that I I didn't really know what it meant to, to love your wife, I know God gets the commandment, husband, love your wife, and then that's the first, and then the second, he told the wives to respect the husband, but he didn't put it, wives respect your husband, and then husband love your wives, because I think he put it like that, because the husband is the, is the head of the household, he's the leader, right, so he's like, hey, the only way your wife can respect you is follow you if you love her. You know, I know love translates to agape love, so the same love that Christ has for us, that he loves the church, and I always have towards my wife, but it's kind of like, I still didn't know what that meant, so my prayer every night was very simple, Lord, help me to love my wife. Help me to love her because you're the only one that knows her fully. I don't know her. Like, you know the things that make her happy, the things that I can do that will, you know, eventually she will love me back or respect me. So now you fast forward when every time it's a, a decision that needs to be made, my wife is like, well, my husband thinking, I'm like, well, wait a minute. You know? And I know it's that other scripture that said that you, you, you work together too, right? Like, I'm not going to fall over her, but like, we, we submit to one another, right? So it's kind of like I was like, okay, well, she's giving me full authority to do this, but then I'm, I'm humbling myself too to be like, well, hold on, like, this is what I think, but let's talk about it a little bit, you know? So it, it's great to be on the other side of that. But then I look at my marriage and I look at when we had Grace. So we had, we had Grace after DJ died. And Grace means uh, God's unmarried uh, favor, right? But also, not only that, it just means the character of God, right? So God shows us grace through Jesus down on the cross for us for our sin, right? So I was like, well, well, I have my daughter, Grace, that I love, but like God gave us grace, I believe, at that time for our marriage. So not only did he give us grace physically, but he gave us grace spiritually to get through the tough time of losing it, uh, DJ and then the tough time of us like bickering and fighting with each other all the time. Um, to the point where people didn't want to be around us or come visit the house, um, and we didn't, you know, it was times I, I didn't want to go home from work, I just like, man, I don't even want to go home because I don't know what's going to happen when I get there, you know, I can't talk, you just argue. So, then uh, we, went, we went through that, and then we went through counseling, um, and we came out of that and with a different perspective. 
Um, so we, we, we worked on not like blaming each other and trying to get better. Now, you know, for two people who only dated two months, it's a lot you gotta still go through, you know, because you just, you just kind of clean up what's on the surface, but then you gotta go through things, uh, you know, deeper to understand like, okay, where is this actually coming from? You know, like, why do I feel this way about my wife? And then it's like, what am I believing about my wife? You know, it's like, am I believing? If God really said that we were supposed to get married, why am I believing that, like, I shouldn't be with her? You know, I'm, I'm not happy. You know, it's like, you know, that's a selfish statement, right? It's like, oh, you're not doing what I want, so I'm, I'm unhappy. So God told me, like, um, I have the scripture right here. Psalms uh, 139, 23 to 24, it says, Search me uh, thoroughly, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts, and see if there is any wicked or hurtful way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. So I stopped, you know, looking at my wife for like, hey, she's not doing all this stuff. And so I looked at myself like, like, okay, I know my wife may have some issues, but like, what is it me that, that, that I can change and, you know, help me figure those things out and then change my heart? Um, that way then I can change my heart and my view towards my wife and I can see how you do. Um, and then the second thing that I believe the Lord gave me was uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, uh, verse 7. Um, Love bears up under anything and everything that comes. Is, every, is ever ready to believe the best of every person. It's very important. It's hopeful. Its hopes are faithless under all circumstances. And it endures everything without weakening. You know, so he gave that to me while we were going through what we went through. And I like pray that prayer like every day. It was like, Lord, like, like we were trying to stay in here, we're trying to get. So then you fast forward up until we actually got pregnant again. So the whole time I'm going through that, I'm like, okay, Lord, I want a son. Like I have a daughter already, like I want a son. So I'm just talking to God like I want a son. So everyone would say, Hey, what about if you know you had a girl? And I know I'm like, okay, God, I know you said that I was going to have a son, so why do you people ask me if I'm having a girl? I'm like, okay, I think this is a testimony of my faith. Like, do I really be, like, believe this? Or am I just going to be like, well, you know, so I would say, oh, no, I think we really going to have a, a, a boy. So then we go to the ultrasound and actually calls me like, hey, you might have to come in because these guys think there's more than one baby in here. And I'm like, okay. So then we go in and the, the doctor, the lady was, you know, getting her all ready. She's like, once I put this on here, I'm going to know right away if there's uh, multiple babies. And as soon as she put it on there, there's multiple babies. And she was like, oh, I can try to see the sex. It was a little early, but she said, she's like, this one's a boy. I was like, okay, good. And she looked again, this one's a boy. And I was like, oh, man, uh, you know, we just both began to tear up and stuff, you know. And, you know, you just lost the words, but the, I think the significant thing for me on the side of that is that I talked to my mom a little bit earlier, and I was like, hey, mom, um, you know, after going into the ultrasound, they think it's more than one baby, and she's like, wow. So me not knowing, my mom's there on her way while she's at work, she's going to the bathroom, she's just praying, like, Lord, let it be two boys so that he can raise them up in, a, in, your, in your ways. And then Amen. when we go in there and, you know, talk to the nurse, and the lady tells her, like, yeah, it's two boys. Amen. And I'm like, and then I call my mom, like, oh, praise Lord, like, you prayed this, and, like, this is what happened, you know, so she was excited. Amen. You know, she's here today, and um, I was just, I was just really, really happy about what was going on. So now, I'll fast forward to the uh, pregnancy, because we're sure on time. So when I actually went to the doctors to get induced, um, the doctors are really, her doctor, I forget what his name is, but he, he's a physician. He was really um, calm cool and collective, and he was just like, hey, you know, it'd be nice if Ashley took an epidural or whatever, you know, such and such to take pain off, because if, if, if she gets to a point where she's in, if she had pain when we like uh, in the OR, because uh, the baby's turned sideways or whatever, like, I really just didn't want her to go through that type of pain or whatever, he's like, you know, I'm pretty sure you don't want her to go through that either, and I'm like, no. And what Pastor was saying earlier is, is very true, it's like the doctors, I put here, and they do a great job with all the talents and skills they have, because God gave them those talents and skills to help us out, right? So on one hand, you have, you know, an option, right? And it's like, man, that's a really good option. You know, it's like, man, this is good. But then on my side, what I, what I always struggle and I fight with is just like, then you have the spiritual God side of things, right? So you have this, which is a great deal, but then you have God's deal, which trumps every deal. And it's kind of like, me and my wife, I talked about it, and I, and I prayed every night. I was like, Lord, I want my sons to be hid down, to come out naturally. 
of how you plan birth in, in the past. And I know because of the fall of man, because of sin, that you know that's you know that's the reason why women have to go to childbirth. But I was like, remember your scripture that said, when a woman loves you, Lord, that she doesn't have to go through uh, childbirth pains. You know, she doesn't have to endure uh, you know typical pain because of sin. So. You know, I prayed those things, and then when we went in, it was like, well, baby A is here down, but B is kind of sideways, and it was like, you want to have a door? My wife turned and asked me, like, hey, uh, do, do, should we do this? And I've learned over time is that, you know, some things that God gives you is for yourself, but it's for other people too, and you got to be able to, 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 to translate the message in a way that, it's, that someone else can receive. So in the moment, I'm just like, I know what, I'm, what I stand there, my faith is like, I don't want her to have it. So what I did was like, hey, sweet God, since you're in this position, this is where I stand. But like, if you really think you need it, that's perfectly fine. You know, so because you're not forcing anything on her. And she said, well, if you feel that way, you know, let's just not do it. So then she was able to have the babies and go through the little bit of pain that she went through without any medication, epidural, or anything. And because um, epidural is shot, shoot you in your back and your spine, and then it's a chance that like, could be paralyzed for a while and not come back, and I was really worried about that, you know, and I was like, Lord, let, let, let that not happen, you know, because I, I don't want anything to happen to my life, I don't know what I do if something happens to my life, and, um, you know, so she was able to get through all that, had the babies, and then go into OR, and I watched the most amazing thing ever by a woman to push a baby out of backwards, <laughs> and, and I, you know, I'm, and, you know, she listened to the nurse, the one nurse was really helpful, just telling her to grind and push through the track, the, uh, Contractions, which I didn't know they educated me, like, hey, contractions do 70% of the work. The woman just has to bend down to the other 30%. I'm like, oh, okay, I didn't know that. But she listened to him, and the baby came out screaming and crying and stuff, and I was like, Lord, um, you know, th th thank you for that, you know. So, so in everything that we did in our relationship to get up, up to this point, it's like, all of a sudden, that God, he's right here. Yeah. He's always on his part. He's always the same today, tomorrow, and forever. But then you have us on this part that we're faulty, right? So it's like, okay, God, like if my marriage and this stuff supposed to work, like why is it not working? God's like, I'm still the same. It's like it's you that has to change, it's you that has to trust me, it's you that have to believe in what my son did for you, it's you that have to, you know, change your ways and really seek after me and do these things. But once I got an understanding of that, it's like, okay, God, help me align with your perfect plan for my wife and my family. And then now you fast forward. Five years now, me and my wife can stay here and say, like, as of a year ago, we we finally like love each other. We finally have a great relationship where we don't argue about things. We kind of just discuss things and work it out. And every now and then we might have a slip up, but we're easily able to recover. Like now we can laugh about certain stuff that we talk about that we have a disagreement about. So it was just it was really good to have you know family around that that, that loved us and helped us. Pastor Bob, Tina, Regina, Hepsibah, and Richard, uh, now Andy and Rachel, and it's just like. It was a blessing uh, to us, and we just give Jesus all the praise and glory for, for all that He helped us do. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Why don't you just yeah, stay up here for a little bit. Um, you know, I, I would be, a, I just want to say, you know, maybe today you're here, and, you know, this is a great testimony. I mean, God's doing amazing things in their life, He's always doing things in all our lives that we just allow Him to do. Man, would you, let's take a second before we go any further to dedicating these babies to Jesus. And I want you to take a moment just to examine yourself. Where are you? Do you have faith that God's taking you through your situation right now? I don't know what you're going through. Everybody here is going through different stuff. But God brought Ashley and Dion to a place where now, now was my prayer always with, that they would fall in love with each other from the beginning because we just knew that was part of the problem. And they did. And I give God the word for that. Amen. Yeah. And you see today that God's going to use these two in a mighty way. I used to prophesy over them about what their future is going to be. And I really believe God's going to fulfill that. And because I didn't know the timetable, you know, uh, we all want things done instantly. But God takes his time to do things right. And um, so I'm six excited. But let's take a moment. Would you just bow your heads where you're at right now? And just think, and it's you and God now, nobody else in the room. And just think about that for a second. Like, where am I? Do I have faith to believe that God's going to take me through the situation? Actually, do I have faith to even believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God? Do I believe that God, Father God loves me in spite of myself? And the answer to all those questions are yes. And I would ask you to just pray right now for yourself and ask God to get rid of your unbelief, that you can believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, and that if I follow Him, 
I'll love and I'll, and God will I'll love people like He loves them. I'll love my spouse and my children like He loves them. I will serve in a way that will put myself second and Him first. Father, I just ask right now in this room, you see every heart and every person. I ask God that you just take whatever is there that hinders from being close to you and just remove that in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, we just confess our faults to you. We confess our sin, Lord. We confess our unbelief to you, Lord God. We ask God that you just take it away. And Father, restore us to your children, your sons and your daughters, that your word tells us we are. And I thank you for that. In Jesus' precious name, and everyone said, Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And listen, if you prayed a prayer this morning that you really pray that you want to change for God's kingdom. Would you let somebody know? Would you let somebody know? Hey, it was, this was in my heart, but after I heard Dion and Ashley's testimony, I, 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 my heart was changed for God. Amen? I just let somebody know, and that would be really cool. Uh, so we can be strengthened. Ashley, and, uh, I want to have Grandma and Grandpa's come on up, and Ashley, uh, would you help them with the babies? and Bring the babies up. Bring Gracie up with you. So we're going to, uh, Dion Nasty uh, is going to lead us in a prayer, they're going to pray a prayer of dedication to their children to God, and then um, I'm going to charge them, um, and then I'm going to charge the, the family here together, and then I'm going to pray, a, I'm going to read a letter that I wrote to the boys to be read, uh, open under 13th, but come on up guys. Thank you for coming, these grandparents are amazing, let me tell you, they came from Far and far and wide, from Baltimore, from Detroit, right? They traveled, they, they hit every construction site on the way over. <laughs> so, uh, you know, a 12 hour trip turned into an 18 hour trip for, uh, yeah, for uh, Dion's mom and dad. So, why don't you introduce yourselves real quick so everybody knows who's here? Hey, Danny. Shirley Benjamin. Brian Benjamin. We all know you guys. <laughs> Yeah, thank you for coming. I know it was a, it was a, it was a trip, and you know, God kind of bless you uh, for you already have with these wonderful boys, huh? <laughs> Praise the Lord. So we have, uh, like I said, we uh, there's so many things that are different today than we normally do a service, but today, Dion's going to pray uh, with Ashley. We have a prayer here uh, dedicating these boys from their heart to the Lord. And so would you pray with them as they pray this prayer together? you want to do it now? Okay. 